Mahalo, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. That was beautiful. Well, I want to wish all of you happy Mother's Day. And if you're one of those people who has a smartphone or something, you might want to tell your friends that you're at Unity Church of Hawaii <laughs> and to turn us on, you know, so they can be love streamers too. It's so good to have all of you here with us. Um, what we're looking at today and the month of May is the power of mastery. The power of mastery is one of the 12 powers whereby we create what we intend. We create by our intention. And so we set into motion through our intention what it is we want to manifest in our lives. So we have the ability to create. So the question for today is, what are you giving birth to? Is it what you want to give birth to? It may not be what you had been expecting. Now I know when my son was coming into the world, things got difficult. After, you know, I got to thinking about this, I don't know, probably at least 28, 30 hours of labor, the doctor decided maybe we should do this by C-section. And so they took my son's mother into the operating room and then they give her something to relax her. Once she relaxed, <laughs> here he started coming. And so they called me into the operating room to be a part of that amazing experience of seeing my son being born. And what a great joy that was. There's nothing quite like it. What is it that you're giving birth to in your life? We believe in the divine feminine this divine presence, this feminine energy that is creating and giving life to all. The feminine is not passive. That was some mythological statement that was made eons ago, but there's nothing passive about the feminine. <laughs> there is something receptive about the feminine. There is something of great creativity in the feminine, but not passive, it's not passive. Uh, you know, as the bumper sticker says that I've mentioned before, well-behaved women rarely make history. <laughs> right? Now, we in each of our own ways are giving birth to something amazing in our lives because what comes to us is divine inspiration, divine ideas. And Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of the Unity Movement, he and his wife Myrtle Fillmore began the Unity Movement. Charles Fillmore described these divine ideas that come to us from our imagination as angels. They're messengers from divine mind. So they are holy ground. You remember the story of Moses and the burning bush? What was Moses first told when he saw the burning bush? Do you remember? Take off your shoes. Because the ground you are standing on is holy. You are standing on holy ground. And that's how those divine inspirations are in our lives. This is holy ground. It is not something to mock. It is not something to make fun of. You know, sometimes I've told someone what vision was coming up for me and they've said in your dreams and it's like right in my dreams and my dreams do manifest we allow that divine seed to be planted in us to conceive and then we nurture it it's not time to bring it out yet it needs to go through a gestation period we need to use the other of the 12 powers things like understanding to understand what it is we're wanting to give birth to and, and how to do that. We're using the power of wisdom or judgment to know what is ours to do and when. We are using the power of strength to continue to endure and stay the course. Mothers show us the way. There's nothing weak about mothers. Let me tell you about mine. And I don't know which service she's watching. 
So, I love you, Mom. My mom is the most spiritual person I know. She is completely surrendered to God. She is someone who completely loves and loves unconditionally. And her love can be fierce, as is indicated in the following story. <laughs> as a young child, I was prone to exploration. I love to explore places. I love to explore new things. I love to see new things, and I'm still that way. And this started when I was two years old. I have lucid memories going back early in my life, and so I clearly remember when I was about four years old, and I was riding in, my, in the car with my mom, and I saw, as I looked out the side window, a goose in someone's backyard. I thought, wow, that's amazing. I would love to see that goose more closely. And so I tried to remember all the sights as we were finding our way back home. And then, after we got home, my mom got occupied with something, and that seemed like a good time <laughs> to me to go on a journey, to go on an exploration to find that goose. I didn't think it was important to tell her that I was leaving or where I was going because I knew where I was going. I knew what I was doing. And so as I went out, left the house, I tried to follow the way that I had memorized from the sights that I had seen from the car and went to the area where I thought I saw the goose, but I could not find the goose. I wondered if I had mistaken my direction but I wasn't even thinking of the possibility that the goose might have moved in the meantime. <laughs> and after a while, and it didn't seem like that long to me. Evidently, it was longer, as you will see in what's about to happen in this story. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I should find my way back home. I'm sure I can find my way back home. I wasn't scared. I wasn't worried. I just kind of retraced my steps and looked at the sights on the way, you know, and I was four. And so I'm watching the sights and pretty soon I could see our house in the front yard in the distance. And evidently quite a bit of time had transpired on this journey. Because in the time that I had been gone, the yard was filled with people. It was filled with extended family members, some who didn't live close to us at all. I'm thinking, it's amazing. They drove all the way to come to a party, and they're having a party in the front yard without me. I didn't even know there was going to be a party. And then there was a line of police cars <laughs> parked in front of our house. I thought, wow, this is exciting stuff. We have family, we have the police, it's like a big party. And I remember walking up the yard and everyone was preoccupied and they were looking and very intensely talking to one another. And I'm just nonchalantly walking up and as I remember I walk up to one of my aunts. I said, hi Aunt Janelle, what's, what's going on? Why is everyone here? And she looked at me with this startled expression and then she got a big smile on her face because in reflection back on that, I think she was thinking, this guy has no clue about what's about to happen with him. <laughs> and she smiled and said, Timmy, your mother's looking for you. <laughs> oh, she is? Why? Why don't you come over here? And I want you to, to come over here and see your mom. She's smiling very big. And I come to my mom, and my mom has this intense look on her face, which has two things happening simultaneously. First of all, there was an extreme love there. I thought that she was just going to embrace me. I've never seen her so happy to see me before. I thought, wow, this is awesome. I ought to go for walks more often. <laughs> But at the same time, there was another look in her eye. 
a look that made me wonder if I was safe in her presence. <laughs> a look that made me wonder, what is going on here? She was trembling with intensity. And she was staring at me and I wasn't sure which one was going to win out. Was I going to get embraced or was I going to get something else? And I said, Mom, what are all these people doing here? What are the police doing here? She said, they're looking for you. I said, why? Because you're lost. I said, I'm not lost. I knew where I was the whole time. At that moment, I could see my mom's use of self-control. And she took a deep breath and just paused for a moment and see, she was still shaking and just staring into my eyes. And then she said, you get into that house. You get into that house right this moment and you stay right there. I don't want you to move. I don't want you to go anywhere. You stay in the house and I'm going to come in and deal with you soon. And so, I started walking towards the house. First of all, I thought, wow, this isn't fair. I'm going to miss the party in the front yard. I wanted to see the policemen and look at their police cars and, you know, see family. But my mom wants me to go into the house. And then as I'm walking into the house, it's almost like a time release thing was going on with me. Why does she want me to go into the house by myself? What is it that she wants to do that she doesn't want to do in front of the police and our family? And then I became quite concerned about my well-being. <laughs> I started to realize, this is not good. And I went in the house and I waited. And the longer I waited, the more difficult it became because I knew something was coming. And after a while, my mom came in and we had an interaction that was unforgettable <laughs> where I learned to never do that to her again. I always had the desire to explore and was always inquisitive and curious, but I knew not to do that to her again. It was very, very clear. Right? The police are celebrating that I was found. So, what was my mom demonstrating and what can we see about how to take care of our dreams? Well, first of all, we protect our dreams. We watch over our dreams. We don't just treat them like some piece of trash. This is something sacred that has come to us. We affirm it. My mom is one of the people who has always affirmed me and always believed the highest and best in me. No matter what, <laughs> no matter through the highs and lows, she always believed in the highest and best for me and still does. And that's what we do with our dreams. That's what we do with our visions. We know the highest and best for ourselves. Someone may have told you that you're not good enough. Someone may have told you that you're untalented. Someone may have told you that you couldn't achieve that. And yet there is that within you, that dream that is within you that wants to express and be given birth. And the fact that that dream or that vision is in you is evidence that it is able to come to pass. Because as Eric Butterworth, the famous unity writer said, the dream itself, the vision itself, is the proof that all that is needed is already there in incipiency. That word incipiency is like potentiality. Everything that is needed is already there, like an acorn of an oak tree. It has all that is in it to make an oak tree but it needs to be planted into the fertile ground. It needs to receive moisture. In the same way, our dreams are fertile. And when we plant them into the rich field of spirit and nurture them and protect them, and like the people in the front yard of my house, 
have a village to support us, people who love us, people who believe us, then we can nurture these dreams. When it comes to your dreams and your visions, do not trust them to a hater. Jesus gave us this spiritual principle when he said, do not cast your pearls before the swine. And I used to wonder, what's that mean? Who throws pearls in front of pigs? <laughs> well, he's giving us a spiritual principle. Don't use that which is holy and treat it as if it's rubbish. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, who are supportive of you. We want to give birth to these dreams. Now, I've been influenced by a lot of different people. One of them is Meister Eckert. Meister Eckert was born about 1260. He was a Dominican monk and a preacher. And he had a very divine feminine view of God, as you can see this. And imagine being in the Catholic Church, being the head of the School of Theology, at a time, yeah, where the Catholic Church was very patriarchal and saying this, what does God do all day? God gives birth. From all eternity, God lies on a maternity bed giving birth. He goes on to say, what good is it to me if Mary gave birth to the Son of God 1400 years ago and I do not also give birth to the Son of God in my time and in my culture? We're giving birth all the time to the divine. The divine wants to do something amazing and new as us. It's no accident that you're here. You're here by divine appointment. It's no accident that you're on this planet. You're here to do something amazing in a way that's never been done before. Yeah. You're here to do something in a way that's never been done before. You're here to give birth to this divine expression as you. So this is a big labor and delivery room. <laughs> We're here to give birth. Yes. Yeah, deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> Meister Eckhart goes on to say, We are all meant to be mothers of God, for God is always needing to be born. Meaning that presence of God is just expansive, always expanding, wanting to express as us. Repeat after me, I am, I am. The, expression the expression of God in action. Of God in action. I, give birth I give birth to my dreams. To my dreams. Mm, feel that? Do you feel that? You give birth to your dreams. I want you to turn and look at someone close to you. Look at someone, yeah, lock eyes, yeah. <laughs> Repeat after me. You are, you are amazing. amazing. You are here to do amazing things. And I am here to believe in you. I am here to support you. We're here by divine appointment. Give each other a high five or a hug. Another influence in my life, Carl Jung. Carl Jung, the Viennese psychiatrist, says, The creative process has feminine quality, and the creative work arises from unconscious depths. We might say from the realm of the mother. We are all here to give birth to our dreams, to give birth to something amazing as us. It's been waiting millennia to be given birth by you. You're the answer to your prayers. Whatever it is you've been praying for in your life, do you realize that you are the one that's transformed by your prayers? Zorn Kierkegaard, my favorite philosopher, said prayer does not change uh, does not change God, but changes the one praying. Prayer does not change God, but changes the one praying. We are transformed moment by moment into the answer of our prayers. You will not even recognize yourself a year from now. 
a, a year ago, I had no clue that I was going to be the senior minister of Unity Church of Hawaii. I had no idea. But I was open to that divine inspiration, open to those divine ideas, and open to nurturing it, following through on it. Who knows what you could bring forth in your life. It's up to you. It's the power of mastery to give birth to your dreams. And let's do this together. Mahalo.